This is the podcast for Narrate Church. Narrate Church meets every Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. at the Grand Street Theater in Helena, Montana. For more information, visit www.narratechurch.org. If you haven't been with us this far, or at least since January, we started a series on that first Sunday back in January called It's About More, and you may have concluded from the graphic that it's a relationship series, no, it's a sex series, but only kind of. Uh, Really what we're trying to suggest in this series is that sexuality is about way more than sex. And so we've explored uh, issues like lust. Some of you skipped that one. I I have someone that I talk to frequently and she said I just couldn't handle it. No way, I couldn't come to that one. And yet we didn't really talk about sex that week. What we talked about is that lust is not just a sexual issue, it actually is a, a life issue. Last week we talked about intimacy. This morning is a treat in my mind because this morning you're gonna hear from Caleb and if you're not familiar with the narrate culture, Caleb has been around for a while. He's been working with students most recently. He's, we talked in Vision Weekend about the value that we wanted to bring to this idea of internships around here, and Caleb's the type of guy that uh, the staff and the council has empowered, and he just keeps hitting the ball out of the park. And so as someone who works with middle school students every weekend, it felt appropriate to me to ask him to come give uh, the climax talk. <laughs> See, the 11 o'clock has so much more personality. <laughs> Because the only person that laughed at the nine was the guy who was making fun of me. This guy up here in the front row, who shall remain anonymous, but his last name, it sounds a lot like Ball. Um, (laughs) Anyway, uh, you know, what I've asked him to do is come talk to us about, you know, uh, not to talk to us exclusively as singles, because we're not. And yet, really, to speak, he's a single person himself. And so to come talk uh, about singleness and sexuality and singleness, and yet I think you'll see that it very quickly relates to all of us, no matter what your relational status is. So come on up here, Caleb. Would you give it up for Caleb? Welcome him for me. All right. Thanks, guys. A little surprise. Is this on? Oh, okay. A little surprise that I'm up here talking in this series. Kind of, me too. All right. Uh, so uh, this morning, what I want to talk to is people that are single, people that are dating, uh, people that someday hope to get married. And uh, before you shut off, if you're like, I'm married, why am I here? I should have stayed home. Uh, I think this morning is just as valuable uh, to you because what we're going to go over is this idea of uh, we don't have marriage problems, uh, we have relationship problems. We don't have marriage problems, uh, we have single people problems. Uh, And so, uh, because, right, like marriage problems uh, are kind of simple. Like those don't end up in divorce. Those don't end up going to counseling. Like marriage problems are like toilet paper over, under, over, who's with me? Uh, Same toothpaste bottle. Like do we share the same toothpaste bottle or separate ones? Uh, French press, uh, drip coffee. Like those those are kind of marriage problems. Those are simple. Uh, uh, Single people problems, though, those, those are a lot deeper. And right, and and you have you have these uh, two single people that like right do 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 fall in love and they get married and uh, they bring uh, their problems with them. So this morning it's not really a, a purity message. It's not a sex talk. Uh, it's a relationship message. Uh, it's a single person. Uh, talk and and me being single, uh, I'm not here saying that I know everything. Like I'm in the midst of this. I'm wrestling through this uh, like everyone else, so I thought, uh, let's tackle it together. Uh, so uh, what I want to do is go over these two myths, uh, these two myths that uh, uh, kind of our culture has portrayed on us. Uh, this first myth is uh, sex uh, It's just physical. Uh, it's just something that everyone does. Uh, uh, if it makes uh, you feel good, do it. Uh, it's fun. Why not? Uh, as long as you're doing it safe, as long as both uh, people are in agreement, uh, it's, it's fine. Like, it's just physical. Uh, and culture has kind of portrayed the, this on us. And I'm not bashing culture at all. I'm just saying, you know, what culture uh, portrays, it's not reality. Uh, it's not matter of fact. Uh, and so it's this idea that it's a whole lot more. Uh, like, like, I don't think culture is against great marriages. I don't think culture is against happy relationships. Uh, but it's just not sellable, right? Like, we would not watch a movie of this happy married couple because it'd be like, how long are they just going to sit in their living rooms and read? Like, this is lame. All they do is walk in the park and, like, 
how was Billy's day? Oh, it was great. How? Like, like and then sometimes they don't even talk at all, right? Like, it'd be lame. And we sure don't want to watch married people have sex, so we don't even go there. Like, culture portrays that uh, uh, the more, the better. Like, that's why we have TV shows like The Kardashians and Jersey Shore. I'm not bashing if you watch those, but, right? Like, like they, they thrive off of this idea of uh, uh, the more affairs, the more drama, uh, divorce, uh, more money, uh, uh, scandals, you know, uh, the bigger the story, and, and we just kind of entertain off of it. And so that's what culture portrays because uh, it's sellable. And I think deep down, though, we all know intuitively that uh, it's about a whole lot more, right? Like, I think if we're honest with ourselves, that uh, we know it's more than just physical. Uh, and to, to, to get us all on the same page, whether uh, you follow Jesus or not, or whether you believe in the Bible or not, I, I want us to all get on the same page. So I'm going to ask a couple questions. And these questions, uh, they might bring up some hurt or some pain of some past experiences, and this is not my intent at all. It's not my agenda. My only thing is I want us to all feel the, the gravity of this. Uh, so here they are. Uh, why is it when a child uh, is molested and they grow up, and uh, they kind of connect the dots. It's not, oh, some dirty old man touched me. Uh, it's a lot deeper than that. Uh, they carry that with them uh, the rest of their lives, uh, sometimes even kind of twilting them off their axis uh, to where uh, they can't even really cope with society. Uh, why is it men with the deepest sexual addiction, not just like this curiosity, but like this deep consuming addiction, uh, if you look in their background, uh, you find out that they have a missing or absent father. Uh, the experts can tell you uh, the reason why is because it has to deal with sex and sexuality. Uh, why is it when a woman is raped, it's not like her getting assaulted, uh, getting a black eye, calling the authorities, uh, moving on from that relationship. Uh, sometimes she can't even call the authorities. Uh, much less really tell anyone about it. Uh, her view of men is forever changed. She, share, she carries this kind of pain uh, with her the rest of her life. Why? Because uh, it's more than just physical. Uh, why? Because uh, sex and sexuality is connected to us. It's connected to our innermost part of us. It's connected to our soul. Uh, it's connected to our emotions. Uh, you know, it's not that uh, it's just spring break. It's not that uh, it's just uh, prom night. Everyone does it. Uh, it's not just this thing that uh, we, we can just uh, flippantly uh, do, right? And, and this guy, Paul, uh, in, the, in the text, he talks about it to a group of people just like us that didn't understand the implications of it. Uh, a group just like us that kind of treated it as just physical. Uh, so this guy, Paul, uh, he talks about it in 1 Corinthians t- to this group of people, 1 Corinthians 6, uh, 18. Uh, he says, flee from sexual, uh, sexual immorality. Uh, sexual immorality, sex outside of marriage. Uh, he says, uh, flee from it. Uh, don't resist it. Don't manage it. Uh, don't do as little as possible. Like, get out of there. Run. Because... Uh, if not, uh, it, can, it can miss with you. Uh, all other sins people commit are outside their body. See, Paul, he understood that uh, the level to which uh, sex is connected to us is deep, in sexuality. Uh, see, Paul understood that uh, it's connected to us. See, that's why uh, our greatest regrets it usually has to deal with sex and sexuality. Uh, that's why when someone says... Uh, comes up to you and says, uh, you know, this is my deepest, darkest secret. It's not that they backed a car into, you know, a parking lot at Safeway and didn't leave their name and number. Uh, It's not that they stole a bag of gummy worms from the gas station, right? Like, it's a lot deeper, Uh, usually sex, sexuality. Uh, He goes on to say, uh, but those who sin sexually sin against their own bodies. Uh, see, when, when we mess with this, uh, we cheat ourselves. Uh, we hurt ourselves. It's not that uh, it's more uh, 
it's not that it you know, can't be forgiven. It's not that it's worse than our other brokenness, but the level to which it hurts us, uh, it's like none other. And, uh, and this guy, Paul, he sees this to a group of people uh, like us, like in a culture that uh, doesn't really portray uh, sex as something uh, about more. And so uh, a couple verses before, uh, he, he tells this group of people, uh, verse 16, Do you not know, uh, no, Paul, we don't know, uh, that you, do you not know uh, that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body. And uh, w- when Paul said this, uh, this group of people were like, whoa, Paul, uh, I don't know if you know what you just said, but you just used this word unite, and this word unite back in the Greek uh, meant uh, two becoming one that couldn't be undone. Like super glue, uh, two coming together that like they're stuck, they're not coming apart, like Uh, scrambled eggs and cheese, like uh, spaghetti and tomato sauce. Once you mix it, there's no undoing it, right? Uh, That's what this word unite meant. And uh, this group of people, they were like, Paul, uh, we're just having sex with a prostitute. Uh, It's not that big of a deal. Like, we're not uniting. Come on. Like, slow down here, Paul. Uh, Like, uh, all this is is a little transaction. Like, I have a need. She's fulfilling it. Uh, This is just a mutual thing. This is just a pastime. Like, uh, don't be so uptight. And uh, Paul goes on to say, uh, uh, for it is said, the two will become one flesh. Uh, I was thinking about this. Like, when God created... uh, sex and sexuality, like in the midst of creation, right? Like uh, while he was creating uh, everything, uh, like at one time there wasn't sex and sexuality, right? And God's like, oh, I got a great idea. Uh, Angels, come here. Uh, You're not going to be able to understand this, but I'm going to create something great. I'm going to give it to cats and dogs, animals, right, Uh, for procreation, Uh, and then I'm going to create humans, and I'm going to step it up a notch. Uh, I'm going to give this to people, these two, these, these people that these two people, oh, that was mixed up. Okay, <laughs> right? So, so that the, these two people can experience uh, this, this thing full of passion, this thing that is fierce, uh, that they can experience this thing uh, of intimacy, intimacy to know and to be fully knowing uh, this thing that I want it to be a reflection of what I want them to experience with me, intimacy, to know and to be fully knowing. Uh, And it's going to be great. Uh, But man, I sure hope that they're careful with it. Uh, I sure hope they use it wisely because if they don't, the level to which it can hurt them and bring pain to them, uh, it's going to be deep. Uh, and it's really going to hurt, so uh, be careful with it. Uh, see, sex, uh, it's, it's this thing of intimacy and commitment, uh, the only hope that relationship and marriage has. And if you're like, uh, that's, that's all good, Caleb, like, uh, I'm glad that's your preference. Uh, I'm glad that you think uh, you really shouldn't have sex before marriage. Uh, you know, I understand that's the kind of the churchy Christian preference, but that's not my preference. Uh, here's the thing, though. It's not really a preference. Uh, it's a predictable outcome. See, a preference is uh, like, I like uh, tea, you like coffee. Uh, I like pop music, you like country music. See, that's a preference. Uh, see, a predictable outcome is like health, right? Like, if you don't go work out, eat uh, a healthy diet, like, see what? No, okay, I missed that one up. So, right, uh, predictable outcome is like health, right? Like if you eat what's right and you eat nutrition uh, and you do physical activity, uh, the predictable outcome is that uh, you're going to be more healthy. Uh, If you eat junk food McDonald's four times a day and just sit on the couch and play video games, the predictable outcome is that you're not going to be all that healthy. Uh, uh, When you mess with sex and sexuality, Uh, Just flippantly, uh, there's a predictable outcome. Uh, Getting getting ready for today, uh, a couple months ago, I started kind of talking with friends, connecting with people, people that were married, people that were single, people that uh, had shattered uh, uh, 
uh, relationships, and I just started asking, like, a uh, broad range, what do you think of the subject, uh, what do you think about this, and I met with this, this, this guy, and I was like, so how's your marriage? They've been married a couple years now, and I was like, how's your marriage? And he's like, ah, it's, it's okay, it's, it's good now. Uh, what he goes on to tell me is that uh, he had brought something into his marriage. See, uh, what he said was that uh, they'd been married for two years, and uh, he had brought something in that uh, he didn't tell his wife. What it was was a month before they got married, uh, he had sex with his ex-girlfriend. And uh, he couldn't tell her, he couldn't tell anyone of this thing that he had did, the thing that he treated as just something physical. And so he brought this into his marriage, and uh, it kind of wrecked his marriage for the first couple of years. Uh, had this pain, he had this, uh, this depression, this guilt of what he'd done. He couldn't even tell his wife who he, had, he, he loved and he adored. Uh, and see, if you were to ask him, he would say that sex, uh, it's a whole lot more than just physical. Uh, in fact, it kind of wrecked my first couple years of marriage because I didn't treat it as something fragile. Uh, but see, you, uh, you can determine your story. Uh, you can uh, determine where you're at from six months from now, a year from now. See, you can determine your story for someday when you meet that someone, that someone that you fall in love with. Uh, you can determine that story uh, by deciding today. Really, there's only two kinds of stories that uh, you, you can tell, right? There's the story of, uh, the, yeah, there's spring break, uh, there's prom night, uh, there was uh, the friends with benefits, uh, but now I've found you, like, I want to fall in love with you, I want to get married to you, like, I'm going to stay fully and committed to you, like, that's one story, uh, and then there's another story that's much better, it's a story that, uh, yeah, there was, there was prom night, uh, there was moved in with her, things went farther than expected, fooled around a little more than I should have. Uh, and then there was this one day, uh, today, uh, I kind of realized, it kind of dawned on me that what I was treating as something just physical, what I was treating like there was no implications to, uh, it was a little, whole lot more. And so from this day forward, from that day forward, uh, I, I prepared myself for you. Uh, I waited for you. See, that's a lot better story. Uh, that's a story that you want to tell. Uh, that's a story that you can tell to, to tell to that someone that you meet someday. Uh, see, what, what, that, what that guy uh, that I talked about, about his marriage, bringing that, that Pax experience, what he didn't realize what it, was that his past uh, was his future. Uh, see, uh, you determine uh, what that story is uh, in your future. Uh, the second myth that I want to talk about is this, this right person myth. Uh, and this right person myth uh, goes like this. Uh, I can skip intimacy and commitment and relationship skills because uh, I've found the right person, right? Like, because I've found the right person and we have chemistry. Uh, it's like these two people, uh, they got chemistry, right? Like, uh, they can sit and stare blankly into each other's eyes for hours and not say anything. Uh, they both love snowboarding. They both love the same kind of music. And, like, she can't keep her uh, eyes off of her. He can't keep his hands off of her. Uh, and they're like, I have an idea. Like, we have such great chemistry. Let's get married. So uh, they're like, yeah. So they get married. Uh, and then six months down the road, a year down the road, uh, uh, things are getting kind of rough. So the woman's like, I, I have an idea. I know what will uh, kind of cure our marriage. Let's have a baby. And uh, the guy's like, all right, that'll require sex. So he's like, all right, cool. So uh, they have a baby. Uh, they bring another person into the dynamic, into the relationship, and then... Uh, uh, another year down the road, two years down the road, uh, uh, it kind of fades off again. Uh, and what they realize is that all they really had was chemistry. 
Uh, they didn't have relationship skills. They didn't have intimacy. They didn't have commitment because uh, they skipped it. Like they thought that uh, chemistry could hold them together. They thought that uh, like no one had ever loved like us, so that'll keep us together. Uh, see, these two single people that got married, they thought that uh, uh, since they had a song, uh, they should get married, right? <laughs> like, like uh, it's even a country song. How cool is that? I know, let's get married. So you have these two single people uh, with problems that get married, and then six months down the road, a year down the road, financial issues come, uh, health problems arise, and... Uh, what they find out uh, is that uh, their song wasn't enough. Uh, why? Because they skipped uh, intimacy. They skipped commitment. Uh, see, w- what married people thought, single people that got married, what they thought was that uh, once they got married, they would have a new beginning, right? Like somehow God would uh, flip a switch, their slate would be wiped clean, and that uh, somehow their single-person problems wouldn't trickle into their marriage. Uh, they thought that uh, their, their, their uh, single-people problems uh, would just disappear. So uh, they get married, and, and they find out that that wasn't the case, right? And, uh, and, and this guy, Paul... Uh, he, he talks of, uh, about uh, this idea of becoming the right kind of person. See, single people uh, thought that they didn't have to worry about uh, becoming the right person, that all they had to do was uh, try to find the right person. And uh, when we have that mindset, uh, we get in trouble. Uh, when we have the mindset of trying to find the right person, uh, the text doesn't really have a lot in there about it. Uh, but when we change our mindset of becoming the right person, uh, there's a whole lot in the text uh, about it. And, and this guy, Paul, uh, he talks about it in 1 Corinthians 13, maybe one of the more uh, famous passages in the Bible. Uh, they call it the love chapter. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a couple uh, of these, these things. Uh, you can read the rest on your own. Uh, but this... This is all about becoming the right person. Uh, These are uh, some sweet dating skills or some sweet relationship skills if you take them to heart. Uh, The first one is uh, love is patient. Uh, Like love uh, doesn't push, it doesn't pressure. Like like if you're in a relationship and all your... your, uh, the, the boyfriend wants to do is get you in the bre- uh, bedroom. Like, that's, that's not love. That's selfishness. Uh, love is kind. Another word for that is considerate. Uh, you care how the other person feels. You want to make them happy. Uh, love, uh, it does not envy. Uh, envy is like this. Uh, I feel insecure about myself, so I'm going to make you feel insecure about you. Uh, I've had a horrible day today, so I'm going to make sure you have a horrible day. Like, this is uh, envy is uh, the reason some of our parents divorced. Uh, Envy, maybe your parents didn't divorce, but they didn't have that great of a marriage. Like, this, uh, these are reasons why. Because they thought they didn't have to be kind. Because the other person would be so great that they would never uh, make them have to be kind. Uh, The last one is, uh, it does not boast, it is not proud. Like how many of our uh, fathers uh, would never admit they were wrong? Uh, How many of our mothers would never take responsibility? Like this, this is all hard work. Like becoming the right kind of person, it's tough, it doesn't come natural, Uh, it's not easy. Uh, but long term, uh, it's best. Uh, my challenge for you, if you're you're single, is uh, what are the single pers- uh, single things that you need to work on? Uh, my challenge for you is uh, determine your story uh, by predeciding your future. Uh, maybe you need to get out of a relationship 
uh, move on. Maybe you need to stop dating and just focus uh, for a year of becoming the right kind of person. Uh, maybe you need to focus on being kind and being patient. Uh, you need to uh, maybe stop these addictions that uh, you have. Uh, because, see, uh, six months from now, a year from now, uh, you can decide where you're at. Because uh, your past is your present, and your present is your future. Uh, if, if you're married, though, I, I think this morning it's just as valuable for you because uh, you have single problems too. Like, what are those single problems that you brought into your marriage? Uh, maybe it's this addiction that you thought that once you got married you would kick, but in fact you haven't. It's kind of uh, uh, consumes you now. Uh, maybe it's this anger or bitterness that uh, growing up in your parents' household, there was this, this, this stagnant thing of anger and bitterness, and then as a single person it carried on with you, and you thought that once you got married it would kind of go away, but in fact it hasn't, and now it's kind of tearing uh, your relationship apart. Uh, like, what are those single problems? Like, you can determine where your marriage is at six months from now, two years from now, 20 years from now, uh, by, by deciding, uh, uh, by pre-deciding your future, uh, by becoming the right person. Uh, if, if, you, if you're, you've been uh, part of a shattered relationship or a broken marriage, uh, it, it's not too late. Uh, God, he's all about second chances. Uh, uh, you read about people in the Bible, the greatest people. Uh, they were all broken people that had second chances. Uh, what is it that you need to focus on as a, as a, as a person to become the right kind of person? Uh, so, so that's my challenge for all of you guys. And if you're new to church or you're just looking at exploring Jesus, I don't know where this lands for you. Uh, maybe for you, the sex and sexuality has kind of been a search. Like you've gone from relationship to relationship to relationship, trying to fill this void, this void uh, that you want, filled with unconditional love and this embrace, and you just haven't found it. Uh, uh, God, he, he made you for relationship, uh, and, and he wants to fill that void. Uh, that's Jesus' uh, whole death and, and burial and resurrection. That was him saying, uh, see, I died for you. Uh, you were worth it. I don't care of your past. I don't care of your brokenness, your garbage. Like, uh, lay it on me. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, why? Because I've loved you into your future. Uh, let's pray. For more information on Narrate Church, visit www.narratechurch.org or download the mobile app now available for iPhone and Android.